In a moment's time, I would like to introduce our guest speaker. He is an award-winning documentary filmmaker, executive chair of the Shark Island Institute and chair of the Caledonia Foundation. In 2017, Ian was awarded Australia's leading philanthropist by Philanthropy Australia. He's been a strong advocate and supporter of the Salvation Army for over 20 years and directed the 2008 AFI award-winning documentary on youth homelessness titled The Oasis. I now feel like a massive underachiever, but I would like you all to please put your hands together and welcome Mr. Ian Darling AO. Thank you, Sonia. Firstly, I'd like to acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation and pay my respects to the traditional owners past, present and future. It's a great honour to be speaking here today on Gadigal land at the launch of the Red Shield Appeal in Sydney. I continue to be amazed by the incredible work of the Salvation Army across Australia, helping... Uh, I forgot to put my glasses on. <laughs> That's better. Helping and offering hope to the homeless, those escaping violence, those trapped in addiction or battling mental illness, and those affected by disasters or financial troubles. The salvos are there day and night, offering their support where it is needed most. Today I want to talk briefly about homelessness. Firstly, the homeless initiative we had launched 10 years ago. Secondly, examine what has happened over the last decade. And finally, give my thoughts about what needs to be done to end homelessness in Australia. The last time I spoke here was 10 years ago in 2008, when we'd just launched our documentary, The Oasis, on ABC television and released the National Youth Commission's report, Australia's Homeless Youth. Both initiatives were philanthropically funded by individual donors and foundations, led by the Caledonia Foundation. Again, highlighting the important advocacy role that the community has played alongside government in attempting to solve homelessness. I'd been involved with the Salvos Advisory Board, their Education Foundation, and at the Oasis Youth Support Network since the mid-90s. And as a documentary filmmaker, I felt compelled to tell the stories of the young homeless people I was meeting on the streets. We wanted our film to show the face of youth homelessness and put those faces into every lounge room and every school around the country to contextualise the extent of the problem, back it up with the facts and provide a blueprint of 80 key recommendations to government. Let's have a quick look at the trailer from the doco. In many ways, it's as relevant today as it was 10 years ago. It's Captain Paul Moles here. Can you send an ambulance to the Oasis Youth Refuge? I mean, there are just heaps of them out there. And living in refuges, on the streets, squats, abandoned buildings, under bridges. These are tough kids. I mean, they come from tough backgrounds and they're tough to deal with. I've worked with these kids for 25 years, and the reality is they're pretty damaged. Come on, you're for. These kids exist in the community. The challenge is, what are we going to do about it? I use drugs every day. I hate using. I hate it, because I'm slowly disappearing, as you can see. Slowly disappearing. I spent the beginning of my childhood Watched my mum get bashed, and I used to get bashed too by my stepdad, not even my real dad, for sticking up for my mum. It's like, where was my mum? She used to get drunk, come home and abuse us, just because she was drunk, and I wouldn't want that for destiny. Oh, guys, if you hate though. the place so much, why are you well, sitting here now? Don't worry about him, mate. He's a cop sucker. I have kids in my office almost every day telling me about one of their earliest memories, seeing their parents sticking needles in their arms. You know, these sort of things that leave deep scars. I can't, I can't do that, but yes, I've got nowhere okay. to live for fucking... Well, so why do you think we're here, mate? Love you, Mum. I love you. It's not something I, I get up in the morning and say, oh no, I've got to go and deal with all these people with problems and these people who won't get their acts together. I go in thinking that today might be the day for someone, it'll be their day. Behind that behaviour 
and behind that person is a journey that's led them to that point. Well, I don't like you to see me like this, Robin. I'm in a bad way. Look at me. I want to see you alive, Hayley. You've just got to keep offering, believing. It's something that we're working on every day with these kids. At a later stage, when everything else has collapsed around them, we try and grab them as they fall over the cliff. If we get through today without someone having some major crisis, it will be a miracle. This philanthropic initiative led to the Rudd government releasing its own report into homelessness, The Road Home. It was the first comprehensive government response in 20 years since the release of the Burdekin Inquiry in 1989. The report acknowledged the complexity of the issue and set an ambitious target to halve homeless, homelessness by 2020. But let's examine what's happened over the last decade. Homelessness has not been halved, it's significantly increased. Almost 300,000 people experienced homelessness in 2016 and sought help from services. And over that same year, 78,000 young people between the ages of 10 and 25 sought help from services. Nearly half of the young people experienced domestic and family violence, which led to their homelessness. And one in three young people in need were turned away from homeless services. Now, I'm not a politician, nor a strategist, academic, or social worker. But after 20 years of exposure to the homeless sector, I'm going to make a few unqualified observations from the sidelines. Homelessness should not exist in Australia. The community should be outraged by this human rights tragedy. We need to open our eyes and speak up every day and much louder. We will never get the appropriate response from the governments of Australia until we do. Homelessness is again off the political agenda. I didn't hear the word homeless mentioned once during the last federal election campaign, nor in Tuesday's budget. Over the last four years, $15 billion has been stripped out of the federal budget for essential welfare services in the community, whilst people on the lowest incomes continue to go without food and secure housing. We have a long way to go. We now need a giant leap in policy, a total shift in our thinking, both in terms of funding and strategy, a bipartisan approach. We need a new national homeless strategy. Currently, there isn't one. We need to lock in a substantial 25-year funding commitment to end homelessness, regardless of who is in government, state or federal. Our electoral cycle is out of sync with the needs of the community. We cannot solve a long-term issue like this when policy is driven around the three-year electoral cycles. Coupled with this, we've had five prime ministers in 10 years, and this has worked against the homeless. Yes, housing must remain a priority, but if we're going to stop chasing our tails and moving beyond Band-Aid solutions, we must establish long-term, fully funded, early intervention and prevention strategies at scale. Homelessness is not about sleeping in a cardboard box for one night. It is about years of poverty, trauma, abuse and neglect. Homelessness primarily occurs because of the problems that happen within the home. Until we deal with multi-generational disadvantage, early child, child care and other education services, domestic violence and sexual abuse in the home, alcohol and substance abuse in the home, and issues around neglect and mental health, until we do this, until we provide a full compendium of care at scale in the communities of need, we will never solve the homeless problem. The next phase of our own philanthropic commitment towards homelessness will involve a suite of films and educational materials, including a new documentary, The Oasis, 10 years later. We plan to release this on ABC television later this year. A decade on, the young men and women from The Oasis will reveal that most of the damage was done by the time we met them on the streets as teenagers. Their homes were places of chaos and danger. The first five to ten years of their lives were the ones that set them on the course of homelessness, addiction and crime. In collaboration with the new documentary, the steering committee behind the National Youth Commission will be, re be releasing a major report card on what has happened over the last ten years. And it's not a pretty picture. Another lost decade. 
We hope this new philanthropic initiative will re-energise the Australian community and help create a leap in policy and a 25-year bipartisan national plan to adequately deal with homelessness. A critical part of achieving this will be the continued advocacy of the sector. Working against this, however, is the Federal Government's proposed electoral reform bill currently before Parliament, which will potentially penalise charities who speak up about the public policy issues which shape our nation and its future. The bill is a disaster for the sector and for our community and for our democracy, and it must be stopped. Organisations in the charitable sector must retain the capacity to have frank and fearless conversations with government about homelessness and all community issues without the threat of draconian penalties. It will serve no one if the government puts the muzzle and an unworkable administrative burden on the people and organisations who have the hands-on experience, who can speak from the trenches. If we're to build a fair and just and inclusive society, we need these people, like the Salvos and like so many hard-working charities out there at the policy table, unafraid to speak their truth. I want to live in a community... <laughs> I want to live in a community where we can all advocate on behalf of the homeless and give voice to the voiceless. This is all happening at a time when the Salvos need our help more than ever. The issues in the community have never been so complex and social inequality so great. I encourage all of you to step up and dig deep today and to keep digging for the next 25 years until we can hopefully get it right. Frank, I commend you and your Red Shield Committee for all you are doing. I commend the work of the Salvation Army and for your incredible work in the community day in, day out, each and every year. Frank, I'd like to present you with a cheque. Actually, it's not a cheque, it's the back of my name tag. <laughs> but stay there, I, I seem to have lost it. Anyway, I'd like to present you with a cheque for $100,000 as well to the Salvation <laughs> Army Red Shield Appeal. <laughs> Thank you all for coming today. Thank you all for generously supporting the Salvation Army, and most of all, thank God for the Salvos. Thank you.